Hi everyone, my name is Ivory Harlow. I am with the Ohio Farm Bureau. And today I would like to welcome you all to the 2021 Virtual Ohio Agritourism Conference. This session is how to pivot and still profit during the ongoing pandemic. Is it over yet? It's the question that we're all asking. Today, we're gonna to talk about lessons we learned from 2020 and how we can use those lessons to inform 2021. We know that you are planning now and have to make decisions now to have a successful agritourism season in 2021. That's the goal of this session today. So let's think back to 2020. Some operations fared poor. Others had the best year ever. When we look at the operations that didn't do as well, um, those were operations that were relying largely on school tours, uh, wedding venues, things where large gatherings were necessary. Those kinds of operations typically did not have a great year. When we look at the operations that said, yeah, I rocked 2020, that was a great year. It was outdoor activities. It was agritourism operations that had safe social distancing available. So some of our operators reported having horrible years. Others said they were the best. All of our agritourism operators in Ohio learned lessons. I spoke with the operator the other day who mentioned keeping what worked from 2020. An example that he provided was online ticket sales. So he said not only did that create scarcity, uh, feeling that people needed to buy those tickets now to get in because there was only a certain amount of tickets, but it also really reduced the stress on the staff. Um, having fewer people on the farm made it easier on the family and also staff and employees. So that was something that he intended to keep moving forward into 2021. John Adams said, every problem is an opportunity in disguise, right? Sometimes we can learn things that we incorporate, incorporate into our business model that can make us a more successful agritourism operation. Another lesson many Ohio agritourism operators learned was the need to diversify revenue. So if they were selling at a pick your own operation, adding other streams of revenue to that pick your own operation to support if for some reason they could not have people physically on their farm. It's a great lesson learned. Entering new market channels, and we're going to talk a little bit about that in the presentation today. What are some new marketing channels that you could enter as an agritourism operator that would complement your current operation? E-commerce. So not only did Amazon have the best year ever, but farmers that were selling online also had a fantastic year. How do we take lessons learned from the giants with those logistic networks to incorporate e-commerce on a scale that works for small businesses? One thing that we all learned and will take into 2021 was how to plan for the worst but hope for the best then we are in a great position to take whatever comes at us in 2021. We've seen COVID cases start to fall. We're all keeping our fingers crossed that things are back to normal early spring or late summer this year. However, we don't know because of the unprecedented nature of this virus what it's going to do. And we wanna be prepared so our businesses are successful regardless what is in our future. So today's session, I'm going to share nine ideas to pivot and still profit during the pandemic. Why nine, Ivory? Because there were nine, there weren't 10, and I'm not about to waste your time. You're busy folks getting ready for our agritourism season to start. So in this session, I'm going to share nine ideas. We're going to talk about how to expand your operation. We're going to talk about how to improve your operational efficiency. We're going to talk about cost savings, how to analyze your costs and what's most profitable for you. Again, I'm just trying to help you make decisions now that are going to hold regardless of what the future looks like so you can have a successful agritourism season in 2021. So the first idea that we're going to talk about is moving it outdoors. I read about a great example online of someone who had one small barn building for checkout um, and for their small retail operation. Well, they had 
adequate space outdoors to do the activities. But when it came to checking out in retail where they were making a good uh, profit doing those retail activities and one checkout, they weren't able to conduct those activities because of the requirements for six feet apart, for masks, um, for limiting the amount of folks coming through. So what they did was they moved the checkout outdoors. So they equipped employees with phones that used a mobile pay app such as uh, Foursquare, but there are plenty of those applications out there. Sometimes banks actually offer those kinds of applications and they moved the checkout outdoors. It worked so well that the individual operator said, we're gonna keep this for the future. They were able to have all of their data at the end of the day and put that together and look at their sales using these mobile pay apps. So moving the checkout outside worked for them. Another thing, it's a trend that we've been seeing, especially when our friends in the restaurant industry were needing to shut their doors due to capacity issues, was large tents constructed outside of the restaurant establishment. So this works great seasonally, but we also in fall and winter started to see the heaters move outdoors, tent sides come down, and to be able to provide additional seating space or additional space utilizing tents. Often, because this has become so popular, you can do that pretty inexpensively through a rental company. So start thinking, if I had space, what could I do outside instead of doing inside? Or what would complement what I'm currently doing that could be done in a tent at a relatively low cost? Tip number two, idea number two to pivot and still profit is to control the crowd. Many agritourism operators utilized online ticketing for the first time. You can use a app on your website, PayPal offers one, for example, um, but you can incorporate that into your physical website. You could also use a service like Eventbrite or Facebook. You can sell tickets online now as well. So utilizing pre-ticketing, so folks needed to purchase a ticket um, helps control the crowd. It'll also help you stagger the entry or cap the entry. So you have an idea of how many folks will be on your place at any given time. Another great idea that we saw in our big box stores um, in our communities was having special hours for vulnerable populations. A uh, way that that could work, not necessarily for a vulnerable population, but just to allow folks to be in a smaller groups at certain times on your farm to control the crowd would be something like a special day for homeschoolers a special day for grandparents that are coming to the pick your own or special hours, for example. So making a special almost VIP uh, access to your agritourism destination is a great way to control the crowd. Also keeping in mind traffic patterns. So the more that you can route folks that are on your farm in certain traffic patterns and make it more orderly is a great way to control the crowd. And you can use Christmas lights, for example, on the ground um, with arrows and directing people with signage is a great way to control the crowd as well. So think about those traffic patterns and how you can make safe social distancing and just ease a flow through your operation. I often think about rotational grazing uh, systems on farms when I'm going to pitch this next idea to you all, but doing rotational grazing with your customers. So how this might look on a tour, a winery, for example, that has a room where the wine is aging and a tasting room, and then they have the vineyards outdoors. Could you take smaller groups, stagger the tour times and rotate them? So you only have a small group of people that can stand apart in the wine tasting at a certain time, out in the vineyard at a certain time and then have folks move around and complete the tour instead of just taking a large group. Can you rotationally graze your customers? It might be a great way to move people through, control the crowd in an orderly fashion. And then I already mentioned keeping group size small, but focusing on smaller groups. So when you reach out and are doing your marketing efforts, reaching out to churches, for example, or reaching out to homeschool um, conglomerates or homeschool co-ops, or reaching out to daycares, for example, instead of the large school systems and school districts that you have been reaching out to in the past is a way to still have smaller 
groups come in and enjoy your agritourism operation and not being reliant on having those large crowds of people. Number three, control your costs. So this is a tricky one, uh, especially when it comes to agritourism, because people will think automatically of the cost of a pumpkin patch, for example, is planting the pumpkins. And you don't think of the labor that goes into that and the prep work that goes into that and adding all of the costs that make that pumpkin patch beautiful and ready for picking. How do you control your costs? It starts with managing your expenses, knowing what each individual activity within your agritourism operation is costing you to put on. So there's a really uh, great way to think about this as you're looking at your different activities and what is providing the biggest bang for your agritourism buck. And it is called the BCG matrix. And I stole it from business school and modified it for agritourism. But here's the basic idea. You have stars, question marks, dogs, and cows. If you look on your side, the return on your investment. So what is the return? What is it profitable for you to do with the activity? And on the upper, you'll see the ease. So how easy is it? And by ease, I mean to plan, to coordinate, to put on. So let's think of um, a agritourism activity such as wagon rides. Well, the return on the investment, so let's say you own the equipment, you need one person to drive the tractor and you are charging a moderate fee of $5 for folks to sit on a wagon ride. And it's relatively easy. So you have a large return on your investment. You're getting five bucks for a family that gets on that ride and it's pretty easy to do. So that's a star. Um, an example of a return on an investment for a cow um, that is low, if you are putting in a corn maze, for example, and you need a lot of equipment to put on that corn maze and you are, it's free uh, with entrance into your agritourism operation and you need special equipment to not only plant, but to cut and to maintain that corn maze. That kind of sounds like a cow to me. You're not getting a huge investment on that. It's pretty difficult to put on. Um, that's something that you might want to consider. Now, if people are coming just for your corn maze, then that might be something that you want to keep as a stakeholder. But this is just a new way of thinking about your agritourism operation, each activity, how they fit together and what it's costing you uh, to put on these activities and where you might consider cutting costs and looking at it on the matrix of what's, what's the ease of it, how difficult is it and what's the profit of it. So once you've thought about each activity, how difficult is it, how easy is it to put on and what is the return on investment? How profitable is this? I would create a matrix just like this label each activity in each little square and look and really assess your costs and consider how you can take tighter control of your costs. Idea number four, add e-commerce. So growing e-commerce has been a trend well before the pandemic hit. I don't know about you all, but Amazon has now taken a substantially larger chunk out of my paycheck than ever before. Things that I used to run down to Kroger and buy, I am buying on Amazon because I'm already buying everything else on Amazon, so why not add it to the cart? It's become so easy to purchase on Amazon that we have all experienced the lag in our mail because so many people are doing the same. What this means as a small business owner is people are more comfortable with buying online, not just comfortable with buying online, they're comfortable buying food online. So before the pandemic, most people would say, ah, but I like to look at my produce, mm, but I wanna pick this out myself. But since the pandemic, people are like, I just want fresh lettuce, right? There's have more trust and greater confidence in e-commerce for food and farm products. That is a huge opportunity for small businesses. If you are in agritourism and there is some component of what you do that you can offer online through e-commerce, I would highly suggest looking into that service. There are several ways you can do this. So an e-commerce site, adding that at, such as a Shopify, 
app or something like that into your current website is something that you can do. You can also get buttons. You can use PayPal. You can incorporate that into your website relatively easily. It's more of a drag and drop than it has ever been before to add e-commerce to your website. I would also suggest um, considering delivery or pickup of farm services and products. So even if folks are just picking out what they want and purchasing it online, and then they're going to pick it up in a safe, socially distanced manner from the farm, that is also in, in the pandemic era of drive through and takeout, people are being more comfortable with that sort of thing. So considering if you are also growing produce or if you're also um, working within the uh, CSA, a community supported agriculture framework, what are some ways folks could drive through or pick up and pay online, um, make it much easier for you to facilitate as an individual without staff. Tip number five is direct sales. So we already talked about direct sales a little bit using e-commerce, but let me share a little bit about a local winery um, where I am. So this winery has a vineyard. They also do tours. They have meeting space and a tasting room. And so they were doing pretty much all direct to consumer sales prior to the pandemic. I recently went into Walmart and saw their wine on the shelves. And I also noticed at a small shop in the next county over that sells local food, they are also broke into retail there. So they have moved from doing just direct to consumers at their winery to now selling direct to retail stores. So that's something to consider if you have a product. Again, I'm sure they are set now that folks are able to enjoy visiting the winery, they are still selling direct to consumers, but they added a new market channel of direct sales to retail. So uh, if you have a retail product, direct sales is a great way to go. I also read an article about a blueberry farm that actually said that they were doing relatively well because they have the space for the pick your own, the safe social distancing, but they had a unique opportunity when a smoothie shop opened in town to sell blueberries direct to the smoothie shop, which then turned them into smoothies. So there were some new opportunities and they thought, you know, we're doing pretty well with the pick your own, but we have seen in COVID how quickly that can change. And so now we are going to start getting into these um, direct to business sales, uh, which they hadn't been doing before. Idea number six is tweak. Tweak means improving a mechanism or system by making a fine adjustment to it. So you're not changing what you're doing really, but you're tweaking it to make it work in a COVID type scenario. So here are a few examples of how to get you thinking of how you might tweak what you have done in the past to be able to do that during the pandemic. First would be, let's say you have a made to order type food establishment on your agritourism operation. Can you change that to prepared food? Can you have those things individually wrapped? Can you do picnic lunches that are box lunches that are set and already in a box where someone can take that and have that as part of the agritourism um, experience that they are on your farm doing. If you were doing wagon rides in the past, so we saw some, some counties struggled with that last year. Could you change that to a walking farm tour? Can you make that look uh, like a desirable thing to walk the farm? Can you market it in a way where you're getting, you're getting to walk the farm on a tour instead of taking a wagon ride? If you were doing agritourism activities on your farm and you have perhaps wildflowers or cut your own flowers, could you do an educational walk across the farm where you're educating on the different wildflowers that grow in Ohio or you're partnering with someone that's doing a grazing workshop or something like that where you can bring those folks onto your agritourism operation to engage folks in an educational session? Are there ways that you can tweak what you were doing to reach new audiences and to diversify your revenue streams. Number seven is extend the season. So our friends that have wedding venues were hit pretty hard in 2020. However, with challenge comes opportunity, right? Those folks that couldn't facilitate very large wedding gatherings all had meeting space available for smaller gatherings. 
as someone who creates a lot of meetings and depends very largely on venues that are through government or libraries with small conference rooms, those were all shut down. Suddenly, I was in need of very large spaces for smaller groups where we, they could be spread out. Wedding venues, awesome. So if you have a wedding venue and you have not looked at folks that might like to use that venue for meeting space on weekdays, nights, and you can perhaps market that very actively to people looking for meeting space, I believe you have a big opportunity on your hands. Things to consider, you will need Wi-Fi, very good Wi-Fi, um, audio visual, tables, things like that. But for the most part, folks that are meeting for a few hours or to have some kind of small meeting with a smaller group will be very considerate of the space, won't make ha nearly the mess, and it could be very hands off. You could say, I'll unlock it at this time and lock it up, just leave it how you found it. Um, and for a reduced cost, because they're using it on a weekday or a week evening, um, providing that space. That would also allow you to extend and do year round if you are only using your barn venue for summer and spring, for example. Could you use it for fall and winter weddings? Number eight, go virtual. So many schools were closed down to field trips and they weren't able to bring their students out to the farm. Many agritourism operators in Ohio that relied largely on school groups visiting their farm had a very difficult year in 2020. What if you created a virtual tour like you would do with a school group and then packaged that with a Zoom, this kind of format, Zoom with a farmer? So you go on the tour, you educate during that tour, and then you Zoom where people in the classroom can use that as a live Q&A. Students, most of our students, are back in the classroom. However, one thing we will keep from COVID is virtual learning. It's on the rise. People are looking for those kinds of activities and there's funding available for those activities. So consider what you would charge to for your time of putting a package, a virtual tour together, and then also for the hour or half hour where you would zoom in with those students and answer questions about agriculture. Think about how you can turn agritourism into virtual agritourism experiences. Another thing to consider is once you have created a virtual tour, uh, you're going to have to target folks that you haven't targeted before with your programming. So thinking ahead to schools, libraries, for example, any kind of uh, organization that has an educational component that might utilize that content to educate students or adults, depending on what you do in agritourism, is a great place to start. But you will ha have to market to a group you probably haven't advertised and marketed to before. And the last idea is pizzazz. So as I was doing research for this session, I heard some really creative, really awesome ways that agritourism operators were pivoting and still profiting during the pandemic. And I just wanna share some of those top-notch ideas with you. First of all was photo sessions. Many agritourism operators had partnered with photographers, family photographers or high school uh, photo photographers or portrait photographers, and they offered mini sessions on the farm with that photographer. So they allowed the photographer to come take pictures on their venue for a fee, and then those families came in for mini sessions since it was self-contained with the family and folks were, uh, traffic was controlled, they could do that on their farm. I thought that was a great idea. Another really fun idea I saw was a uh, conveyor belt petting zoo. So when this petting zoo was closed down and they couldn't have people sanitizing their hands and touching the animals and they couldn't control that, they allowed, they made a conveyor belt type of feed system where the children could put the feed in a conveyor belt and then it went up and fed goats on different levels and the kids could watch and take pictures and it was fun. So it was, what an interesting and creative idea to create a conveyor belt type system to the different goats and it's still interactive even though they're not getting that hands-on petting at the petting zoo. 
Another cute idea I saw was hog races. So they did little piglet races and allowed folks to watch and cheer from afar. And everybody had a great time at that agritourism operation um, and just put little jerseys on the piglets and did a little piglet run. I actually did an agritourism like activity this winter in the Christmas spirit. I purchased online tickets for a drive through light show and we drove our car through, it was about an hour and a half or so of Christmas lights. And it was fun and we got in the holiday spirit, uh, $30 a car load. So it wasn't inexpensive, but it was fantastic. I felt like it was, you know, we, my husband and I agreed that was definitely worth $30 to get in the spirit and listen to the music and see the lights. Could you do something like that with the drive through farm tour? Because let me tell you, the line for that Christmas light tour was wrapped way around the racetrack that we went and took the tour on. So there's definitely a market for that. Think about ways you could add pizzazz, something special, and then write a press release on that and put that pizzazz out to folks in your community and visitors to your community. So that rounds out our nine ideas to pivot and still profit. Thanks for joining me. Since the nature of the pandemic is changing and we're watching counties change color every day, I wanna give you a few tips on what you need to do entering into the agritourism season to make sure that you're in compliance. First of all, pay attention and be in touch with your local health department. Your local health department is going to have the final say on rules. If you visit, um, there's a link here, but you could also Google find a local health department, Ohio. There is a portal that will help you locate your health department and it will provide the address, the phone number, so you can ask questions and get real time answers. The second thing I would advise is pay attention to the governor's orders. So stay up to date on those things. If you don't watch them, you can always find the releases on the governor's website at governor.ohio.gov. And also, the state health officials put out news releases almost daily, certainly weekly, at the Department of Health uh, website at odh.ohio.gov. So there you can find the latest and greatest from our state health officials. So keep monitoring that as things are always changing at, to make sure you're in compliance and hopefully, right, as these restrictions loosen and we're able to perform more activities uh, and have more folks to our farm or change the nature of what we're doing, you will be in the know if you follow the local health department, pay attention to governor's orders, and keep state health officials' communications in mind. Thank you so much. If you have questions for me or want to share some really creative agritourism ideas that you have seen during the pandemic and beyond, you can always reach me at Ivory Harlow, iharlow at ofbf.org. Thanks so much. We'll see you soon.